The Secrets of Star Wars is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. I am Emily Swallow, also known as the Armorer on The Mandalorian. And I'm just giving a little shout out to the Secrets of Star Wars podcast because this is the way. You're listening to The Secrets of Star Wars, episode 125. Hello there. It's a power that Jedi have that lets them control people and make things float. Impressive. Every word in that sense was wrong. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. I find your lack of faith disturbing. It's against my programming to impersonate a deity. That's not how the Force works. Force is with me, and I am with the Force, and I fear nothing. Remember, the Force will be with you, always. Hey everyone, I'm Father Andrew Kinstetter, aka Father Fett, and you're listening to The Secrets of Star Wars, where we talk about everything connected to that galaxy far, far away, including the deeper themes and meanings. Also, just up front, please be sure to share the podcast on your favorite social media and leave us a review uh, to let us know how we're doing, because this helps us get seen by more people who would love to hear us talk about Star Wars. And today we are very excited to have a special episode in our podcast. But before we get to that, joining me today on the panel is, first of all, we've got old Ben himself, Mike Creevy. Hey, everybody. How's it going? I figured you were going to do your hello there intro. That's what everybody thinks I'll do. So, <laughs> got a uh, I'll do it at the end and be confused. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, second up is Mike Denz. Hey, Mike. Hello there. There it there is. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I, that was my best friend. At the... <laughs> <laughs> Which is not very good. <laughs> well, that's an appropriate sort of uh, segue. I don't dare try to do any uh, voice impersonations here because I'm just terrible at it. But today we are thrilled and honored to welcome a, a very special guest to the show who we, we are going to be talking all things Star Wars with. You would know him best as the voice of many Star Wars characters, and he is the narrator of many Star Wars audiobooks. So today we welcome the talented Mark Thompson to the show. Mark, welcome to the show and welcome to the Secrets of Star Wars podcast. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So in general, how are things going for you? Uh, pretty good. Um, I'm actually coming off of a super busy chunk of time. Uh, and then this week I was able to let the foot off the gas a little bit. And then next week I'm going to actually Friday, I'm, uh, flying down to spend time with my brother and then I'm going for the first time ever to galaxy's edge. So I'm oh, very walking fun. on the cloud right now. <laughs> I'm very, very excited. fun. Did you yeah. go to Star Wars Celebration? I did. I did. Nice. Nice. Amazing. Were that you guys is... there? I I had tickets and I had to cancel because we had, oh. uh, <laughs> we had pre nations in, in Wyoming that I had to be at. So I'm hoping. Oh man. In the future. Yeah, yeah. So um, so to kick things off in, in the Star Wars universe, though, so, uh, what was your first experience ever of Star Wars? Oh, man. It's always hard to answer questions like that because I, I was born in uh, 1975. So, like, I'm in that sweet spot of, like, is, you know, I can't remember two years old, but, like, I, I feel like Star Wars has kind of always been around me. Like, I've always either had an action figure or a lunchbox or a bed sheet or something, you know, and, and, uh, my first like distinct memory was seeing empire in the theater. And I remember like Luke crash landing on Dagobah and R2 falls in the swamp. And he's like, R2, R2, where are you? And I screamed out in the theater, he's in the water. <laughs> you know, <and> <laughs> was, like, was, that's like the biggest crystal clear memory I have. But I feel like it's like ubiquitous and it's just always, always been there and always around everything. So, well, and, and I wanted to ask you just as far as uh, narrating audio books, just in general and in voice acting, you know, sort of yeah. more broadly, uh, did you always know that was something you wanted to do or, you know, like growing up or how, how did that sort of develop? Well, um, not definitely not audio books. Like I, I think I, I'm trying to remember when Aladdin came out, but like, or, or no, I'm sorry, when Mrs. Doubtfire came out, uh, 
I, I feel like that was the first time where I was like, wait, what's that? Like, what is, what is he doing there? <laughs> you know? And, uh, that was maybe the first time I was like made aware that, oh, right. Like, you know, like I've heard of Mel Blanc and stuff and, but you don't think of the actors behind the microphone. You just think of the, the cartoons. So like, I think that was one of the first times where I was like, oh, wow, that's, that's interesting. I wonder if I could do that. Cause I'd, I'd always loved performing and acting and kind of was in school plays and speech and debate team and all that fun high school stuff that plants all those seeds in your heart. Uh, but then, um, like, like when I saw Miss Doubtfire and Aladdin, I was just really blown away by all the different characters that Robin Williams could do. And I really looked <laughs> up to him and that's when I maybe started playing around with mimicking things a little bit. And, uh, uh, and, and improv and stuff like that. And, and, um, I think that was maybe the first time the light bulb went off. Um, and then I got involved. Uh, I went, I went to NYU to study theater in college. And then my sophomore year, there was like, uh, this is before the internet. Uh, <laughs> they had like a, a cork board and just people posting things on cork boards. And somebody had put a post it up about an audition for a cartoon, uh, at MTV. And it was, this one was for a vampire cartoon. So I auditioned for that, but that one didn't go into production. But then they liked me enough from that audition that they called me in for this other show they were doing called Daria. And that was kind of my first big, you know, break. And I, I, got, I got to do a bunch of voices on that show. And then it just kind of snowballed from there. Like people start recommending you and, you know, uh, you, you start getting to know other actors and they say, oh, you should audition for such and such. And, and it kind of just snowballed from there. Mark, it's interesting. Voice acting has been around for a hundred years, maybe like with radio and everything uh -huh. else and cartoons and whatnot. Uh, but audiobooks, especially with how easy it is to listen to them now, has been around a lot longer. Do you have a preferred medium between audiobooks and voice acting? Uh, as a performer or as a fan? Oh, gosh, both. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think as a fan, uh, I probably still like movies the most because I love sitting in an audience with like a, a very enthusiastic crowd and seeing it on a big screen and, and the surround sound and, and the special effects. And I really get into that experience. Although I have to say like audiobooks, like at first I, I was like, I was the kid in high school who when a book report was due, wanted to watch the movie instead of read the book, you know, and like try to get the cliff notes and stuff. And well, you were one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I didn't read for fun. Like I didn't read recreationally. I only read when I absolutely had to. And uh, so when my agent called and said, you know, have you ever done an audio book? I was like, no. And I, I was kind of maybe trying to talk them out of it and be like, yeah, not really. It's not really my thing. And then they were like, well, what about a, uh, we have a thing for a Star Wars audiobook?" And I was like, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so, so, but then it was kind of like I had to learn, like, in a way, like, how to read books, <laughs> like, by doing the Star Wars books. Because I could kind of do dialogue and I could kind of do character voices, but I didn't really understand the idea of making the prose, um, you know, engaging and entertaining. And uh, I give a lot of credit to Kevin Thompson, who's the director of a bunch of these, most of them, because uh, he really kind of taught me the art of narrating audiobooks. And and now it is one, it's one of my favorite things to do. Like, I still love doing cartoons, um, but there's something about doing the audiobooks that it feels like you're doing a one-man show, and it, and it feels like it feels like a, play, a really long play, and, and you get so much deeper into character development and really understanding you know, you know, something about telling the story helps me get more involved in the actual plot of the story. So um, as a performer, I'm starting to like the audiobooks more than anything else I do, <laughs> which is so weird to say, because that's not how I started at all. <laughs> well, I can say you've definitely learned how to do the narration very well. Oh, so. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it took a lot of work. <laughs> So what was your experience uh, more specifically uh, getting involved in the Star Wars novels and audiobooks? So um, like I was saying, I, my, my agent called and I'd been doing um, animation and, and cartoons for a while at that point. And I kind of reluctantly was trying to blow it off. But then when I heard it was Star Wars, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so they gave me um, a few pages of, of this book and, and uh, it was 
it was a uh, legacy of the force was, was the first one I did. And it mm. was a, it was going to be a nine book series and it was basically kind of telling the fate of now Luke and Leia's adult children and kind of, you know, kind of almost like a passing of the torch to that generation. Um, and I really, really worked on it hard because <laughs> I really wanted it. And I, I kind of rewatched some of the movies and I, I really, you know, worked on it and I, I prayed. I was like, God, please let me get this. This would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so I, I, uh, I, I, I went into the audition and I, I always, I, I think in retrospect, I, I got it cause I could do a reasonably good, um, characterization of like Luke and Han and, and, and some of the legacy star Wars characters. Um, and I think that was enough to kind of get my foot in the door. And then, like I said, uh, Kevin had to kind of hold my hand and coach me through, you know, okay, now you got to make this prose and in, in, interesting. The, the, the dialogue's fun, but the rest of the stuff is really boring. Like you're making <laughs> it sound boring. So you've got to, you got to understand that there's a reason the author is describing what this room looks like. You might think, you know, oh, they're just saying it has four gray walls and a single lamp and, uh, you know, but like there's something about the character's uh, point of view that's being expressed in that description. So you've got you got to think of it as, you know, this, this is what, why, why is Luke noticing how sparse the room is right now or, or how humid the planet is that he's on right now or, or, you know, whatever it is. Like it's saying something about his mental state, his emotional state. And, and you got to imbue that with meaning. And then, and then I, you know, just kind of kept chipping away at it. <laughs> so, um, and, and I've gotten to do it now. It was since 2006. So however many mm -hmm. years that is, it's, it's been a while. <laughs> kind of, it's crazy that you say that because, um, I feel like your voice has been in my head for, well, for decades. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, I mean, because I was one of those, I was one of those kids that, uh, 2006, I was in high school. And wow. I was chomping oh, at the man, bit I'm for old. the newest, uh, the newest Star Wars books, and so the Legacy of the Force, Fate of the Jedi series, yeah, are some of my favorites. Oh, that's great! And so to have uh, your voice narrate them, I, I just, I associate you with, with, with those. And well, so, and, and, and can I just say one thing, quick, Father? Because yeah. I'm just piggybacking off that because. <laughs> I said it was funny because we when we heard we were going to be talking to you. It, it, there's a weird psychological thing where I think if you know, I'm sh I may not be the only one here, of course, who thinks this way, but it's like because of that that sort of familiarity with with your voice in there, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I know Mark. Well, yeah, no, yeah. no, <laughs> right. no, I don't. That's really, right. right. That's like, <laughs> he helps me go to sleep every night. <laughs> yeah, I'm haunting you. <laughs> But what's what's truly amazing about what you do is is when you do your characters, Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, um, you know, all the legacy characters, I I am able to visualize them because of because of the way that you do their voices. Um, and then of course all the other characters as well. So I'm curious, what is the process like for you trying to create the voice similar to characters we've heard on screen? Um, I don't know if you can <laughs> adequately describe that process, but what does that, how do you like get into the, the, the mindset of Luke Skywalker and then speak like Luke Skywalker? Yeah. Well, I mean, some of it is just growing up on it and having watched the movies as a kid, like probably dozens and dozens of times, you know, uh, that, that I have some of their cadences kind of just in me now. It's just kind of, you know, in, in my brain. and then. A lot of times, especially if I'm doing a book that centers on one of them, I will, if I have time, I will rewatch Empire. I'll rewatch Jedi. Uh, and, and it, you know, it does help me if I can, like, you know, get a, a certain line of dialogue um, a, as an anchor. And if I can kind of repeat that line of dialogue or listen to it, maybe right before I'm going into record. It just keeps it fresh in my mind, and then I can kind of extrapolate what the other lines might sound like if I can have that anchor to go back to, and if I can have that kind of reference point to go back to. Um, so yeah, I, th I think it's it's a lot of of that, and just kind of playing around with it, and and then and then the new characters. It's just I'm I'm, I'm looking at what the auth how the author's describing them, and and how other characters are describing them, and 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 just trying to get as many clues from the text as I can about you know what what i should make this character sound like and i kind of you know cast it uh 
in my mind. Like I think, you know, like what type of actor or what, you know, what type of, you know, alien or, or what, you know, what would they, if there's Wikipedia is like a huge reference thing for me that I go on a lot and, you know, I'll look at things or if they've appeared in like any video games or cartoons, I'll, I'll try to kind of find clips of them on YouTube and stuff like that. And, uh, or if anyone's from their species has appeared on any of those things, I'll try to look that stuff up and, and maybe, you know, try to see if they're in the same ballpark. So. Well, you, you kind of read my mind because I was I was going to follow up and ask about creating a, a, a voice for a new character, um, but kind of a little bit of a uh, sort of a follow up with that. I personally was wondering with some characters I've heard, you know, I, I'm sure this is probably the case, but do you do you sometimes have a particular, you know, celebrity or someone in mind? Because I, I there's one I want to ask you about that I'm not. I'm <laughs> sure if I'm allowed to ask you about. Oh, sure but, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, <laughs> because what you know, I love in the Thrawn books. Um, I mean, Captain Samacro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really has like a Jack Nicholson vibe. Yeah. yeah, but, yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I, that was intentional. Yeah. But, but it's not. You know. But it's not like what I love is is, and I'd love to hear you know any thoughts you have on this. Just because to me it doesn't just sound like you're just impersonating Jack Nicholson. But you can like you can kind of maybe pick up on like there's sort of a vibe or an influence. Yeah. So how, how do you balance that out? Right. Right. Yeah. No, I know. Um, like I, I, I like doing that because it helps me. Like I had an acting teacher once that said, the more specific you are, the more universal you will be. Uh, mm. And what they meant was, is like, if, if you're, if you're really, you know, like if it's not just, Oh, I'll do a Southern accent or, Oh, I'll do mm. a New York, you know, but like, if you have like a specific person in mind, it, 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 it sounds more authentic or it sounds right. more distinct or, you know, uh, and just after doing so many, I'm sorry, guys, hold on one second. My dog is, attacking <laughs> that's what I was... yeah. <laughs> sorry. sorry you, you never hear that on the audio books. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Ron, wait a moment. I got to get my dog. Right. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So a lot, a lot of times, um, you know, I'll, I'll pick, I'll think like if this were a movie, uh, what actor that's alive right now would be, interesting to see in this role you know mm -hmm. and, and so that that cool. helps me make it more specific and like um and then and then also like when i'm doing so because a lot of times in the books there can be like 60 70 sometimes 80 or 90 different characters now some of them just have one or two lines or you know but like i'm really trying to make them as distinct as possible so when you're listening you're very clear on who's speaking so if i have like a specific actor in mind it sometimes it it, it it, it again anchors me and helps me kind of lock into that voice easier um if i have someone like a like you know that in mind so some people it throws them but i i i think it's fun because I, th I think it's like you know like it, it like it, it's the casting thing and like you could see them you know in the film so so but I, but yeah. i you know i it, it's just just something that that i like to do so that's cool um it's 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 interesting uh, before i get to my question just uh uh you do Harrison Ford very well. And since we're both from a similar generation, I, I grew up in 71. You're, you're probably familiar with NPR's radio drama on uh -huh. Star Wars. And listening to Peter King not even try to do Harrison Ford, right. just, using, just doing his own voice. <laughs> yeah. I keep on looking, uh, seeing um, the show he was in. I even for, forgot, and maybe I shouldn't mention it, but and seeing his face and be like, that's, that's this doesn't look anything, you know, <laughs> yeah. doesn't work at all. He, he's a right, horrible right, right. Han Solo. I mean, you know, uh, you know, the Vader was great and the Leia, but oh my, who'd they find this guy? Anyway, that's, <laughs> yeah. that was my own problem. Growing up. They couldn't they get somebody who found anything like Harrison yeah. to do, to do, uh, to do that. But, um, yeah, there's, I, I know like different actors um, think of it in different ways. Like I, I know, I know some actors feel like, I want to do my own thing and I, I'm going to make it fresh and kind of my own spin or my own take on this. But I guess for me, I, I feel such a reverence for those performances that I feel mm -hmm. like I have to at least make the attempt, even if I'm not always successful, like I have to make the attempt to honor what they did. Cause to, cause to me, if I were listening to it, if it, if it, if it's not in the, in the same, you know, time zone as Harrison Ford, then it, it would take me out of the story more so, um, you know, so, so I, I feel like I, I want to try to honor. You know. Yeah, exactly. But to, to be fair, it was Empire hadn't even come out yet when they first recorded A New Hope. I don't even think even New Hope was A New Hope. So I was just excited yeah. to be able to hear sound effects in my own home. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. back in the seventies. <laughs> so I, you know, I really shouldn't complain too much. Um, but the next thing 
uh, we want to know about is um, how did you get involved with Star Wars Vision? Ah, that's cool. Um, I so I had a very small part in that, and uh, basically what happened was uh, they produced them originally in Japan, and they were looking to dub them into different languages. And uh, one of my really good friends, Mike Center Nicholas, uh, he was Leonardo in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles oh, with me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I was uh, Casey Jones. Uh, and we were in that show together. Right. But he he uh, owns a dubbing studio, uh, NYAV Post. And um, they came to him for it, and and he, you know, said, "Hey, I, I know this guy who does a lot of the Star Wars audiobooks. It might be kind of fun to pull him in." And they were like, "Sure, great, whatever," you know. <laughs> so, so uh, he called me in, and I got to be. I was a couple ancillary characters in uh, the twins episode. I was like a couple stormtroopers and stuff like that. But then in the Tatooine Rhapsody, I got to be the three-headed uh, drummer, Lan, and uh, yeah. that was so much fun. And he, so you're, you're a canon just, now. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I went out, and uh, I don't know, this, this will not make sense to anyone on uh, listening later, but I, I went out and bought the Tops trading cards. Oh, I had nice. my own little yes. Yeah, yeah. So, That's awesome. Um, so yeah, I was. That was like, because yet you know, I I had done a lot of animation, but I I'm. I had never done any Star Wars animation, so to get get my pinky toe in there, I was like, "Oh, I was so so excited!" <laughs> and and he knew I would be, and we were like, we recorded it, and then afterwards we just sat and watched like a couple of the episodes. Like he he showed me the Elder, and he showed me uh, the full Twins one, and and uh, so like, um, yeah, it was we were just geeking out, and we were we were both so excited to be a part of that. So. Well, and I, I have to jump in and say that for, for fans like me who, who have, like I said, listened to you for years, um, to see the names as they were coming up, who was being the dubs in all the, the English versions, it was so exciting for us to see your name pop up as, oh, as one wow. of them for that, too. So, <laughs> And yeah, not, not, not as many people know <laughs> who you are, but it was like, yes, yeah, finally. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> now I was pumped. Like, I was with, uh, you know... I wish I got to record with Bobby Moynihan and uh, oh, yeah. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, but uh, to, to be in the same, you know, bracket as them and tomorrow Morrison was like really exciting. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you, do you have a, um, cause I don't know how you'd measure this compared to like, or like visions compared to the audiobooks, but is there a particular uh, star Wars project of any kind you've worked on? That's sort of your favorite. Oh man. Um, I always feel like they're all my babies and I don't want to choose one. <laughs> I mean, uh, th there's different ones that are special for different reasons. Like I, I, uh, I think dark disciple, I really enjoyed the story and I think I got really emotionally invested, um, more so than maybe other, um, books in that one. Um, I think, I got to do the the novelization of the Force Awakens, oh. um, and that was a pretty special thing to me because that one we recorded like two months before the movie came out. So I I read the manuscript like before seeing the film, and at one point, like Kevin was like, "All right, I'm gonna offer you something, but I need you to tell me if you if if you want to do it or not because it might ruin." the movie for it and, I was yeah, like, what? Yeah. and he was like you know because if you if you do this you're gonna know major stuff and and, and i know how important the movies are to you so i, I like i took a couple of days and i was like gosh do i want to do this because like i want to be in the theater and see it you know like i've been waiting right. like you know so many years for a new star wars movie and like so i told my wife i was like i don't know should i do this because like it's it's really gonna spoil the movie and she was like, are you crazy? Like, <laughs> why would you not do it? And she was like, if they called you to be in the film, like act in the film, wouldn't you do it? And I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> then do the book. I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so, so it was a different experience, but it was, it, was, it was very fun. and It was really cool. So You should have done a reactions to your reading of the script. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, my gosh. What good. is he reading? He can't do right. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, that's awesome. So um, one of the things that we like to do on um, our particular podcast here, The Secret of Star Wars, is because we are all um, faith based. Um, you know, we're, we're Catholics and we love to talk about themes and bigger pictures and kind of get into the, the meta, if you will, of, of Star Wars. And so uh, some of these questions that we'll ask you kind of relate to that. And so the first one that that really uh, relates to that is just what about Star Wars, you know, resonates with you and how has Star Wars changed you? Oh man, now we're good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, so the, the, the idea of the force and the idea of the, the struggle between light and darkness in all of us, I think is something that really, really resonated with me and kind of, um, planted some spiritual seeds in me um that ha have kind of changed my life you know forever <laughs> um uh like i wasn't from a particularly religious family or 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 particularly religious growing up um but i became a christian in college and i i i do like looking back on it now i do think that a lot of those themes of of the force and 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 kind of resisting the dark side and, 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 and stuff like that kind of, you know, planted some stuff in my heart that prepared me for that decision later in life. So, um, I, I really, you know, I, I really give a lot of credit to George Lucas <laughs> no. for helping no. me, uh, you know, and I think it was stated that that was one of the things he was trying to do with those films is he wanted some modern day, you know, uh, mythology and, and things that would like help, people learn you know kind of some some of these principles about good and evil and stuff like that so um so it worked on me and i'm very grateful <laughs> well and, and kind of a related question because i know he uh he's talked a lot about his own background coming out of uh primarily anthropology um and his interest in myth you know joseph campbell like all these things that we've we've all heard about over the years and and, and got a better sense of um and been able sort of through that to I think kind of express how while there's of course a lot of science fiction elements within Star Wars it's not I think in his estimation really a, a primarily a sci-fi genre as much as a you know a, a vehicle for exploring these deeper themes yeah. and so you, you've already mentioned a few but is, is there anything else as far as like you know for for those of us you know, listening to or reading these books you know looking at the, uh, this content watching these films anything in particular you know that you think that these these films can really teach us and these stories can teach us today oh there's so much um i mean i guess the one that's popping in my head right now um you know i i know i know it has its detractors but uh i really have kind of come to love last jedi and and when when yoda says you know failure the greatest teacher is mm -hmm. and just the idea that um part of what Luke needs to do is not just pass on the things that he is good at or skilled at or successful in, but pass on what he has learned about his mistakes and his failures. And just that kind of hit me hard as, uh, you know, the original trilogy was as I, I was a kid and I was all about lightsabers, <laughs> you know, and like, um, and, and even just the idea that like, the force is something you can't see, yeah. but it's there and it's, it, it's guiding us. It's binding us together and you can't perceive it and Han, kind of Han Solo's skepticism of like, oh, come on, you know, like, <laughs> who we are, you know, and like, and just how like, you know, there, there's so many ways that I could dismiss God or I could dismiss spirituality because I can't yeah. see that. I can't touch that, you know, but like, yeah, I think that was helpful to me as a, as a young kid, but then as a, you know, middle-aged father who's maybe made some mistakes as a dad and, and uh, maybe, you know, done some things in life that now I've got regrets about and wish, I wish I could have gone back and done it this way to hear that message as a middle-aged man that, you know, failure, the greatest teacher is, and that you need to pass on what you've learned from your failures kind of gave me a renewed sense of purpose and that I'm not just going to be put out to pasture now because I'm not, the young hero, you know, but like, I've, I've still got something to offer and I, I can pass on kind of, you know, if I have regrets or things I would have done differently, I can pass that on to my kids and to other people that are willing to listen and, and, and help them, uh, maybe not go down 
some of the regretful paths I went, down, you know, and, and I, and I like that, I, that message of, you know, in a way how important it is that, that generations work together and that, right. you know, like that there's kind of the, the mentor mentee and, and that, you know, the, the, the wisdom of the elders, you know, is, is just as important as the zeal and passion of, of the youth and, and how, you know, we want, we want those two things to work together, you know? Yeah. And so, so I don't know that, that was kind of something that was more recent that I connected with. And, um, I think Mandalorian is exploring some really interesting ideas about like dogma and like how, you know, um, if we, if we get too dogmatic, like it's good to have, like this is the way. It's good that there's a, that there there is a path and there is a, a way of doing things that is right. Mm -hmm. And I think I think it's good to have that. But then, we can sometimes maybe take that to extremes or misinterpret things or come up with other things and, and become too dogmatic about things to the point where maybe we start to miss the heart of stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and maybe we start to miss, you know, the heart of what the way is supposed to be in the name of kind of the nitty gritty details. Like, Oh, you took your helmet off. Then nope, you're no longer. Right. It's like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> it's like, you know, like, like, you know, there, you know, it, you know, it, so, so, so that's, that's some really nuanced, interesting stuff that I think is happening in there. And, you know, so, but it's, I, I love, Star Wars. <laughs> like I think it explores yeah. all those things in such depth and, and and you know and just the nature of good and evil and just just even the reveal that you know Darth Vader was Anakin, you know, and that like yeah. when you first meet him he's just the man in black and just pure evil and you know and then to realize no, he was a little kid at one point and he, you know, like all of us, he maybe made some bad decisions and he got, mm -hmm. you know, his priorities out of whack and 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 that could happen to any of us, you know, and we've got to be careful to not do that. And at the same token, there is the possibility for redemption for all of us. Like even after all the horrible things that Vader and Kylo Ren did, like mm -hmm. I just, I just rewatched um, Force Awakens last night, actually, because I'm going to Galaxy's Edge and I'm trying to like, get in that time, like. <laughs> get <in the> <laughs> so, but I was thinking like af after seeing where the story ends, I'm like, wow, it's crazy that he like, you know, wiped out like several planets and there was still a chance for him to be redeemed. There was still a chance for him to to kind of you know, which again, I guess I guess some people might have a problem with that, and you know, but but I think it's inter I think it's an interesting idea that we can you know, not that we shouldn't be held accountable for our mistakes or 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 pay you know you know some sort of penance or suffer consequences for our mistakes, but but I do think the idea that you know, it's never too late. Like you can you can you can always go back to the light, even if you think, no, I'm, I'm too far gone. And no, I'm like, you know, it's too late for me. Like it's, that's not true. Like you can, you can always turn back to the light. And I think that's like a, a really powerful and important message. Yeah. You know? And so, by the way, I noticed we never complain about that mercy when it's extended to us. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's a great course, point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, bring it on. Right, Thank exactly. you so much though. Yeah. 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 And, I, and I, just to just quick, comment on that i mean i think we can all like relate to the villains in that way because none of us is perfect every single one of us has made some mistake and thought the worst of ourselves and so in a sense yeah we may have not destroyed planets like kylo ren has but we can relate to some degree to saying i messed up and and that hope and that that ability to receive redemption is is incredibly powerful and, it, and it's very real and so it's it's a it's a very awesome thing to have in our modern mythos of Star Wars. Yeah, and it's really you see it in Luke Skywalker's arc in the original trilogy of the the hero and wanting to be the hero and then needing to let go, uh, you know, at the Death Star and at the Force, and then his old whole world flipped upside down in Empire, where he's showed upside down several times, and. He has to once again let go and let Leia help him, and then the very act of redeeming his father is allowing his father to save him. Oh, wow. You know, by throwing away the lightsaber, and now I'm gonna, gonna let go once more. And wow. this is the way I'm a hero: is I, I I let my father save me, and he does. And that's oh, wow. that's you know wow, and and a Christian theme of oh, did, did the son just lay down his life <laughs> to hope that the oh, okay, well I, I I can see that. So it's really, uh, I appreciate, um, you know, uh, getting into that with us, Mark. 
Um, but but now for for the definitive uh, question, I'm uh, <laughs> uh, gonna pigeonhole you. Uh, you can't answer more than one. Um, and I don't mean to influence you, but you are a '70s child like me. So be <laughs> Which Star Wars movie is your favorite? Uh, I it, it's Empire. Right? It's okay, like, you're okay. Not right. a huge surprise, but yeah. Oh <laughs> uh, well, and then uh, following that question up. Um, Star Wars has a ton of stuff coming out, uh, you know, in, in the recent years and, and what's upcoming. And there's there's a lot, you know, movies, books, comics, games, all sorts of stuff. Um, what are you most looking forward to in what's kind of on the horizon for Star Wars? Wow. Yeah. Um, the I, the biggest thing for me right now, because it if you asked me a few weeks ago, it was Obi-Wan and I, I loved mm-hmm. Obi-Wan. I thought it was amazing. Uh the next thing I'm super excited about is the Ahsoka show, just because like uh, I'm a huge Rebels fan, and just the idea that we're gonna get to see like Sabine and Ahsoka, <sighs> and most likely Ezra and <laughs> Thrawn, you know. So like, uh, <laughs> like I'm I'm really really excited. That that's probably the one I'm most excited for. Um, but you know, there's so much. Like I I'm I'm dying to see where the High Republic goes. I've really been loving the High Republic. Uh, I'm very. Uh, I'll be really interested about Andor, um, and I think um, I I want another movie. Like I do want, like mm-hmm. you know, whether it's Taika <laughs> or Rogue Squadron. Like I I want to see a Star Wars movie in a theater again with a crowd, and like I'm really I'm definitely craving that. So, well, outside of Star Wars, uh, just you know, you were talking earlier about some of those those interests and influences, and you know, seeing like Mrs. Doubtfire and, and Aladdin and, and and Ninja Turtles came in too, but just in general, what other projects you know have you have you worked on that you've really enjoyed as well outside of the Star Wars world? Uh, I've been really lucky. Like I, I've gotten to work on a lot of, um, I guess shows that were reboots of shows that I watched growing up. So like <laughs> I, I got to do Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which was awesome. Um, I recently did. Uh, I was Megatron on Transformers: Cyberverse, <laughs> like a new oh, cool. version of uh, Transformers. <laughs> That was pretty epic. Um, I did a um, I did a show called GI Joe Sigma Six that was pretty interesting, and that was like a reboot of GI Joe. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, like I, I've done a, like I a lot of the animation stuff I've done has really been fun. Like I, I do like stuff on Yu Gi Oh and Pokemon mm-hmm. and things like that. Um, so yeah, it's I, I've been really really lucky. I've gotten to do a lot of really Dario was fun. Um, just cause like I wasn't, uh, it was a spinoff of Beavis and Butthead and I wasn't necessarily a fan of that show. <laughs> um, but it was, uh, that, that one was really fun cause it was my first big break and it was, it was, it was pretty widely known. Like I remember mm-hmm. like I got a, a Daria cast watch as a cast gift and I was wearing it on the subway one day and this, this wall street guy was like, Oh, I love that show. And I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so it was kind of fun to like, you know, be on something that a lot of people were kind of aware of and know about. And so, and I got to do, um, sorry, I'm rambling a bit, but I, I got no. to do uh, t- a Broadway show. I got to do talk I, radio. Um, and in, uh, it was a while ago now. I think it was in 2005 or seven, but uh, um, Liev Schreiber was the lead in that. And it was basically like, um, he plays this like, Howard Stern slash Rush Limbaugh style shock jock talk radio guy. And they wanted a bunch of voiceover actors to be the people that call into the radio. (laughs) So we were, we were, they built little sound booths for us underneath the stage. And we had little closed circuit television uh, in front of us. And we were calling in like, you know, (laughs) to him on stage and, and they had speakers all around the, the audience so they could hear it as if they're hearing it on radio. Um, And we would have these live, you know, scenes with him. And, uh, that was, that was a huge dream come true to be That's cool. a Broadway show. Yeah. Like that. So that was really fun. That was always one of my favorite parts of Frasier, you know, when they'd have like celebrities yeah. and like, you'd see at the end of the credits, it was like, who? Oh yeah. I thought that oh. was, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was at the fun. end of the season, they would always put yeah, like all right, the right. people. That That's right. Yep. And then, you, then you'd have to be like, I got to go back and see if I, right. <laughs> That's you so cool. hear people and you're like, wait a minute. That's George from Seinfeld. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> Um, have you had the chance, um, to like mentor or kind of pass on advice to 
up and coming voice actors and i mean what what would you say to someone who's like i'd like to get into the voice acting or the narrating books yeah i, I on, on a few occasions i have um i think what i generally tell people is that you know it's important to remember that voice acting is acting um meaning a lot of times uh you'll find some people that want to get into voice acting because I got a cool voice or, you know, like I can do like, you know, little kind of quirky, interesting voices. And that's, that's definitely a part of it. And that's definitely a good thing to be able to be able to do. And, you know, um, but to really make the scripts make sense, whether it's a cartoon or a book or, or a radio play or a commercial, um, you, you want to get familiar with acting and how to, you know, communicate things clearly and, and, and understand what the author's trying to say and where to take the pause and all that stuff. So um, I always encourage people like, especially younger people to like be in the school play and like, you know, take that, take the acting lessons and, you know, and, and kind of strengthen those muscles as well as kind of the uh, imitation or, or kind of, you know, uh, cool voice tricks that you can learn as well. <laughs> so well, yeah, I guess kind of a related question. What, what do you think, or what would you, t- you know, basically share is the hardest part like the most difficult part of voice acting in general and maybe um what would somebody be surprised to learn about that kind of work um i would say like when you're when you're voice acting that the one of the biggest challenges is is you only have your voice to perform with or communicate with so like Mm. if you're on stage or on film you could like you know raise an eyebrow or or (laughs) <laughs> smile or, or like, the, you know, you can gesture a certain way and you can communicate so much with those things. But when you take that away and all you have is your voice, um, you have to really think about expressing whatever's happening vocally as opposed to, you know, with facial expressions or gestures. And so um, that can sometimes take some getting used to. And then like, so I think one of the biggest challenges for me was like the way things are written grammatically um is not always the way i would say them out loud um meaning sometimes the place you put the comma makes sense grammatically but it i would want to take a pause earlier in the sentence or i would need to take a pause later in the sentence you know in order for that to sound right when you say it out loud so sometimes you have to kind of read ahead or like re- you know like like um like like read like as you're saying it out loud kind of read two two or three sentences down <laughs> so that you <laughs> yep. know where it's going to realize okay i need to have this inflection in order for that to make sense you know so that can be a bit of a challenge just 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 to when you're reading something off a page to make it sound as if you're just saying it spontaneously can be a really challenging thing well unfortunately we have run out of questions for you Um, (laughs) I would love to to keep this conversation going though. Um, I do have one quick shout out that I need to make. Otherwise she, uh, probably would, uh, um, Jackie Cordero says hi. Oh, no way. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're we're mutual (laughs) friends. And uh, that's so cool. (laughs) Yeah. So I told her that we were, we were going to talk to you tonight and she was all excited. So I wanted to, uh, make sure to, to give her a shout out. Um, if people are interested in connecting with you, is there a good place for them to to find you online or or connect with you somehow? Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I on Twitter. I'm Captain Ehud, and Instagram. I'm Captain Ehud, and then on Facebook, I'm just me, Mark Thompson. With it's M A R C. Cool. Uh, well, thank you so much for for being on the show tonight. We're gonna um, just kind of uh, wrap things up here a little bit with kind of our our typical outro. So uh, just gotcha. <laughs> hang with us, uh, listeners. Uh, thank you for listening to our discussion with Mark Thompson. And of course, be sure to email us your um, feedback or comment on our Facebook or Twitter page to let us know what you thought, or if you have any other comments you want to add. You can find us on Facebook at at facebook.com slash starquest media you can email us any feedback at star wars at sqpn and you can find us on twitter at sqpn and you can join in the conversation as we have it ongoing on our discord uh, server by going to sqpn.com slash discord And of course, we would like to take a moment to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to create the secrets of Star Wars, including this week, John M., Jerry M., Peter D., Ivan I., and Father Carl W.
Their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue the secrets of Star Wars and all the shows at StarQuest. And you can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. Also, of course, if you are not subscribed to the show, what are you doing? Please subscribe to the show. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or your favorite podcast player. You can also find us on the SQPN YouTube channel. Just hit that bell to get notifications for new episodes. Also, if you haven't gotten our official uh, Secrets of Star Wars uh, t-shirt um, or coffee mug or... I forget even though all of the random things you can get mouse pads or notebooks or there's all sorts of fun stuff. So be sure to uh, check out our merch store by going to sqpn.com slash merch. And so that is going to be it from, t- from us today. And so until next time, uh, Mike Creevy, thank you for joining me and sharing the secrets of star Wars. Well, I wouldn't miss it. And Mike Dens, thanks for joining us this evening as well. It was a great time. Thank you. And Mark Thompson, thank you so much for gracing us with your presence this evening as well. Yeah, this was really awesome. Thanks, guys. And once again, I'm Father Andrew Kinstetter. Thank you for listening to The Secrets of Star Wars on StarQuest. Quest.